The Sound All Sports here at 1040 on the WHO Saturday Sports Line. Mike Lee along with Larry Cutler and on the line, George Allen, who is a former pro football coach and was once regarded not too long ago as perhaps the next coach at the University of Kentucky. George, thank you so much for being with us. Yeah, is this Larry? This is Mike. Mike, okay. Thank Mike? you, Mike, for having me on. Mike has got the deeper voice, by the way, George. All right. What, what happened with the Kentucky situation? Oh, I thought it was better that I withdraw. I didn't want to disrupt their program, and I appreciate the uh, consideration Governor John Y. Brown gave me. And now, of course, you're, the, uh, you're heading up the President's Commission for Physical Fitness. How did that all come about? Well, I'm very honored to accept that position because nobody's a better example of physical fitness than President Ronald Reagan and what he went through. George, back in your days of the uh, the Washington Redskins, one thing that uh, I was, was very interested in, of course, they talked about the over-the-hill gang, but your philosophy of picking up veteran help and trading off future uh, draft choices, which I think possibly, and uh, you you know, did that d disrupt your situation with management? Well, uh, no, I, uh, when I went to Washington, they had a, a pretty good offense and no defense. They had one winning season and I believe it was 16 years, and that was 7-5-2. And, and I felt that we could build the defense and be competitive in that tough Eastern Division with uh, Dallas and St. Louis was uh, very formidable in those days. And I traded some picks uh, for some defensive players that I knew, and we immediately won. And uh, I've won both ways and coached both ways. In L.A., I had three first-round picks when I was the personnel director of the Chicago Bears. I had three first-round picks and uh, drafted Sayers, Butkus, and DeLong. So it, it, it depends on the situation. Numbers to call here, 282-5111 locally, and the toll-free Watts line, 1-800-532-1111. We're talking with George Allen, a former pro football coach, and it's 2.22 in the afternoon. George can only be here until 2.45, so if you have some questions, get them in quick. George, at one time you said that uh, to win is to be reborn, and when you lose, you die a little bit. Do you still hold to that philosophy, and if so, why? Well, I, uh, first first of all, there's that other phone ringing. Let me just, uh, my son will get that. I uh, was expecting an important call from Washington. Uh, first of all, I think that uh, you have to enjoy your work and strive for excellence. And... Uh, be committed to whatever profession you're in. It doesn't have to be a, a uh, executive job, but whatever your job is, whether it's farming or a typist, uh, anything, you, you want to try to be the best. And, and when you work hard and have a victory uh, and t lay your guts out on the line, you feel good about it. You're related. There's no more rewarding feeling than to win a hard game and when you lose if and only if you put a lot of yourself into it do you feel like you've you've died a little bit inside now if you don't feel that way in my opinion then you haven't given enough of yourself it doesn't mean that it's the end of the world or the end of the line but uh, you, you have to feel remorseful and uh, that's the way my teams and coaches all played and i'm very proud of uh, the record we achieved uh, in the National Football League. Let's get to the phones, George. Good afternoon. You're on WHO Saturday Sports Line. Yeah, I was wondering, George, uh, this looks like this may be Bart Starr's last year with Green Bay. It, they may be the worst team in football. Would you be interested in that uh, in that job should it come available to you? Well, uh, Green Bay is a fine situation, and I, and I, uh, Bart Starr is a friend of mine. I hope he pulls out of that. He's uh, He's got a pretty good team there and they're playing a uh, easier schedule you know the NFL scheduling system where the last place teams play uh, a weaker schedule I I really hate to comment on that because uh, they still have a coach uh, I haven't been approached on it but if the right situation comes along I would be interested in not to avoid your question uh, at one time in Green Bay uh, they did offer me the job as coach and general manager. So it's one of the few franchises where a coach can, can have control over his own destiny. Do you think it's been uh, bad draft choices mainly? Well, when you lose, I found that, uh, not that I've experienced that, 
but analyze another. When you lose, it's not just one thing. It's uh, evaluating talent, which is what you're saying, uh, making the right decisions of keeping the players that you know can win. I think people that win have a knack of uh, selecting the right talent. And then I think it's discipline, it's organization, it's motivation, it's getting everybody in shape, and it's wanting to win so badly that uh, you're not going to lose. You got to That's got to rub off on all your, your players, everybody in the organization, on the switchboard operator, on the trainers, on the doctor, on the equipment man. I wonder if he was trying to do too much being general manager and coach. Do you think just by being just the coach that might help? Well, that could help him, yes. I, I think some people can can function well as coach and general managers. Uh, others are better off left alone, and some are, are better off not having to make any decisions and letting a, uh, the general manager do everything, even almost selecting the team. So it depends on the individual. I always like to have the authority to control my own destiny, and I always had that, and I, I functioned that way. Uh, I couldn't uh, coach a team or run a team if I couldn't say who my assistant coaches were, or who's, who's to be drafted and who's to be signed and who's to be cut and, mm -hmm. and, and what to do. I've, I've been in a booth where uh, uh, a uh, coach was sent down a message from an executive to uh, change quarterbacks. Well, uh, I couldn't I couldn't coach that way, and I wouldn't coach that way. You have to be yourself. Sir, thank you very much for the call. We have other calls to get to. And someone would like to talk to you, George, about an article written about you in uh, Sports Illustrated. Go ahead. You're with George Allen. Good afternoon. The article is in Sporting News, and it wasn't exactly about you. It had to do with um, Bud Grant. It had said where he um, is always the last coach to report for spring training and that his theories on it are the players will... Um, be spared less punishment, and they will be more willing and effective, you know, in the later part of the season. And he said, somebody who coaches 18 hours a day, coaching a perfect game, well, they the game. Well, they find out that the ball's oval, and it takes too many different bounces, and they kill themselves after they've lost the end of the game due to fumbles or interceptions. What do you? Um, think about his theory? Well, I, I think Bud's done a fine job in, in, in Minnesota. I respect his opinion. Uh, that's what he believes. Uh, in my particular case, I always was one of the first to go to training camp because uh, the situations I had in L.A. and in Washington, we were rebuilding, losing franchises, franchises that, that had been down, and we were in very, very tough divisions. We had to beat out the Dallas Cowboys. And I just felt that any extra work we could get with our young players, uh, I wanted to start early uh, to each his own. And Bud's record and his success speaks for itself. George, do you think there's such a thing as overworking oneself? Oh, I think I think there is, but I found this, that if you enjoy your work and make it interesting, you can't overwork yourself. If you enjoy your work and it's interesting, you don't overtrain, you don't overwork. Uh, and you have to stay in shape. That's the other thing. You have to really stay in shape physically. You can't burn the candle at both ends. Anything else you wanted to ask? Well, um, Bud had said a couple years ago in a playoff victory, the opposing coach, whom he wouldn't name, was a man who studied game film after film, and he screamed, yelled, patted back, you know, and he said that before the game he was bleary-eyed, and he was just like a shell. He was too emotional, and Grant said, before the game started, I thought that we would win. Yeah, who was that? Uh, he wouldn't He wouldn't name the well, coach. Well, I uh, I suppose that can happen. Uh, I've never had that happen to me. Uh, and uh, everyone's going to defend their own philosophy. And uh, if, if that happened, then Bud is absolutely right. Okay, sir. Thank you very much for the call. And we have one more call before we can take a break. Uh, let's go ahead and take the call right now, then we will take the break. Good afternoon to you. Yes, hello, George. Hello. Uh, the one thing that has made the Dallas Cowboys so great is that their organization is able to pick out some of these players that have come from 
uh, some of these really small colleges. Yeah. Well, Dallas has the best organization in football, in my opinion. I've said that before. They have a, a great owner. In Clint Murchison, who uh, hires competent people, lets them do their job and doesn't interfere. They've had the same president, Tex Ram, for many years. They have a fine personnel director in Gil Brandt, and they have an excellent coach in Tom Landry. They've had one coach for over 20 years. Uh, that's, that's how you win. Uh, it doesn't mean that if someone does that, they're going to win, but you hire good people. You let them do their job, and Dallas uh, has come up with players from all over the country. Uh, so has some of the other teams. Uh, by the way, I think the Vikings have a heck of an owner, and Max Winter, he's one of the best in the league, and he runs his show uh, very similarly. And also, George, uh, I don't know if you're too familiar with college. Are you, too, are you very familiar with college? Yes, I am. Uh, what's your assessment of Dwayne Crutchfield from Iowa State? Well, I, uh, I think Iowa State, uh, over the years, has been a tough place to coach uh, because they're in a very uh, powerful conference, and it's, it's uh, difficult to compete against Oklahoma and <clears throat> Nebraska and Missouri at times. But I think uh, he, he's done a fine job, and I, and I think that, uh, uh, that that program can develop and be very com competitive. Do you think that he'll be able to make it as a pro ball player? Uh, well, uh, that's really that's not for me to say at this time. I, uh, I honestly, I, I probably don't know quite that much about him uh, to, uh, to 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 comment too much one way or the other. Okay, thanks, thanks, yeah. George. I thank you very much for the call this afternoon. We're talking with George Allen. George will be with us for another 15 minutes or so, so give us a call if you'd like to talk with him at 282-5111, 1-800-532-1111. We'll be back in a moment. Alexander Graham Bell here. Mr. Bell, what's your favorite American food? A steak marinated in La Choy soy sauce is a real bell ringer. La Choy soy sauce. <laughs> or add La Choy soy sauce to ground beef or a zippier hamburger. That'll give your mouth a busy signal. Mr. Bell. <laughs> or a summer barbecue with La Choy soy sauce for a real hot, hot number. number. Look, uh -huh. I've got to hang up. I'm trying to invent the telephone. We're talking on the telephone. Mom, I did it! La Choy makes Chinese food. Swing American! You know, Mr. Howell, uh -huh. this old car of yours takes more gas than anybody else's in town. No. Ever think of trading it in? With all that chrome, it ought to be worth a lot. Yeah, but, but look, who can buy a new car with the prime rate so high? If the bank prime rate is scaring you out of a new car or truck, ask your GM dealer about GMAC. GMAC has financing right now at rates that make sense. So get that new Chevy, Pontiac, Olds, Buick, Cadillac, or GMC truck you want with help from GMAC, the financing people from General Motors. 17 minutes, or not, wait a minute, let's get our time right. 27 minutes before 3 o'clock on WHO Saturday Sports Line. Larry Cotler along with Mike Lee and our guest this hour, former pro football coach George Allen. We were talking about Dwayne uh, Crutchfield before the break, and I know you know a little bit about him you didn't get a chance to elaborate on. So uh, what about Dwayne, uh, George? Well, I'm uh, the general chairman of a new bowl game out here in San Diego called the Olympia Gold Bowl, and uh, I ask scouts to rate the top football players across the country and uh, Dwayne Crutchfield is rated very high by uh, Gil Brand of the Dallas Cowboys and also Carl Peterson of the Philadelphia Eagles. We have two different sizes on him. We have him 6'4", around 230, and then we have him 6'3", around 225 pounds. But either way, he's a heck of a prospect and if he stays healthy, he should go very high in the draft. George, you uh, you started your coaching career here in Iowa over at Morningside. Well, that's the reason I'm doing this with you today. I uh, I I like Iowa people. Uh, I had very three very happy years of my life in Sioux City at Morningside College, and uh, every time I go back to Iowa, I enjoy it. I'm uh, tied in a little bit with Universal there, and I uh, know Mr. Nissen of the Nissen Trampoline Company and. 
have a lot of good friends back there at uh, Morningside College. The president, Al Buckingham, who former athletic director. And I think he got a heck of a state, and, uh, and I like the University of Iowa and everything about it. Numbers to call here if you want to talk to George Allen, 282-5111 locally, and the toll-free Watts line, 1-800-532-1111. George, do you believe you can handle professional football players? Do you believe that you have got what it takes to motivate professional football players in 1981? Who's asking this question? This is Mike. Mike, let me tell you, uh, the fact that you asked that question... Uh, my, my strongest point as a coach was handling players. Uh, we won. We were the first to win 10 Monday night games. We uh, sold out every game at RFK, had 10,000 on the wedding list. Uh, wherever we played, uh, we filled the stands. And the reason for that was that we were in shape. We never lost a game because of conditioning. We worked together on our ring when we went to the Super Bowl. We put the word togetherness, went togetherness, meant something. Uh, so motivation and handling players is no different in 1981 than it was uh, the last year I coached, 1978. You still have to work. You have to prepare. You have to be dedicated. You have to get in shape. Uh, and it'll be that way in the year 2000. Since being dismissed by Washington back in early 1978, George, do you think you've been blackballed by some of the NFL owners because you have not had a head coaching job in pro football since that time? Let me, let me, with, with, with the exception, of course, with a brief stable with Los Angeles. Yeah, let me correct you on that. I wasn't uh, dismissed by the Redskins. They offered me a five-year contract, and I turned it down. Uh, they took my stock option out, so I... If anything, uh, I dismissed them. I, I was fired from the Rams after two preseason games, uh, and that's, that's the record there. And I forgot what your question was. Well, do you think you've been blackballed by some of the NFL owners? Well, I, I don't know if, if I have or not. Uh, you know, I look at it this way. If the NFL doesn't want George Allen, George uh, Allen doesn't want the NFL. Uh, I have... Uh, oh, two to three opportunities every month to do something exciting and something big. Uh, if I'm not in the NFL, I don't believe I'm the loser. How do you feel about the NFL right now? And, and first of all, I guess I should preface that with asking you, are you uh, antsy to get behind the lines once again and coach team? Well, uh, I've, I've, had, uh, I've turned down three offers since uh, last season. They weren't the type of offers I wanted. Not all of them were in the NFL, but uh, I'm not uh, in a position where I have to coach to make a living. In fact, uh, I don't have to even work if I don't want it. I'm busier now than I, when I was coaching. Uh, this is Saturday, and when I finish with this interview, uh, I have a very important call coming from Washington, and then I'm gone for the day on, on assignment. I'm in a position where if the right thing comes along, I'll be back coaching, and I think I'll be back coaching very shortly. Uh, I'm not going to coach uh, and be a puppet. I don't have anything to prove. Coaching is a hazardous profession at best, as both of you guys uh, know, and uh, I'm not that antsy to get back to take any job under any circumstances. You got to be an analyst uh, the last couple of years, and I looked at games from a different viewpoint. Uh, that had to be something interesting to you. Did you ever do much second guessing? Because you you you've seen it from both sides. Well, it's difficult not to second guess because uh, you see so many things going wrong. Uh, when you're coaching, you're just concerned about your own team. Uh, and of course the ball club you're playing. So when you sit up above, you uh, you see teams not running a two-minute offense properly, not using their timeouts, and you see a lack of discipline and mistakes and organization and all that. I try not to, to second guess. If there's something uh, flagrantly wrong, uh, I'll, I'll comment on that, but I try to, try to stay away from that second guessing because I never liked it when I was coaching. George, back in the 1970s, your coaching style emphasized defense. Do you still hold to that? Well, uh, yes. Uh, you, 
there, you're not going to win in anything, uh, especially football, if you don't have a defense. Uh, if I come back and coach, we'll have one of the top defenses. We always ranked in the top uh, three on defense. We always had a defense that took the ball away and gave the offense field position and a strong kicking game. I'll absolutely em emphasize defense. I'd do the same thing if I were coaching in, in uh, college or high school. The first rule of winning is is not to beat yourself and to stop the other guy. So, so defense, whether it's baseball, uh, the the uh, basketball, hockey, or, or anything is defense. The uh, Oakland Raiders were known as a team that threw the ball deep, but they also had a pretty good defense. They won the Super Bowl last year because their defense came around. Especially their secondary. It was just incredible. Yes, it was. We have someone on the line like to talk with you, George. Go ahead. You're with George Allen. Uh, yes, Coach Allen? Yes. Uh, in baseball and football now, we see a lot of players want to reopen their contracts if they have a good year, but uh, they never want to reopen them if they have a bad year, and all these agents and lawyers and players demanding part of the TV revenue and stuff. Um, is this something new that's been just happening or has it been going on for a long time, and where is it going to go? I mean, well, it's... It's, it's too bad that uh, we have a strike in baseball like this. I, I've, I've always felt this way, that uh, uh, even though football and <clears throat> baseball and basketball and hockey, professional I'm talking about, our business is still a sport. And I always was disenchanted if, uh, if a professional went on strike. I think you lose something. The baseball players and owners are going to lose something because of their strike. I don't know what it is, but something's not going to be the same when they come back. Uh, I, uh, I think you're right there. I think they will lose something. And I, I disapprove of it. I, I think that, uh, I don't think there are many people underpaid in sports. They got, uh, they got the best of both worlds. They got a, a great <clears throat> life on the field and they got fringe benefits off the field. So I, I don't, uh, early in the first hour, uh, they was discussing the NFL salaries and the football players are at the bottom for the average salary, but I have to believe the reason they're at the bottom because there are so many football players on a squad. I think it's yeah, you got, limit. you got at least 45, and then you have players on the injured reserve that you have to pay full salaries. So most everybody has 50 or 55 uh, salaries, full salaries. So that would make your average NFL team salary pretty low then i mean compared yeah, to well the free agency system in football is is really not a free agent and that that's where baseball salaries uh, got up so high with uh, giving winfield and reggie jackson and well my feeling is when a football player and owner discuss salary or if they have gripes about what's going on they should do their dirty laundry behind closed doors and not really bring it out in the media because when I want to watch a football game, I want to watch a football game or a baseball game. I don't want to you know, hear about salaries and stuff. I, I agree with you. I always told my ball players, and I felt the same way myself, that, uh, that uh, we were privileged to be in the National Football League. You were privileged to play with the Redskins. And you, you should love your job. This is the way I was. You should, and I tried to hire everybody the same way. You should love your job so much that you'd almost play for nothing. And when we, we didn't win, uh, I felt like we were stealing, especially if we played a poor game. And that's the type of philosophy and coaching that, uh, that I always stressed. And not what else can you give me, and it wasn't my fault, and he slipped and fell, and the official made the wrong decision, and all that. Well, is it, is it a lot of these players, reps, and agents, and lawyers that, that gets into the pitchers and stuff? Well, I think, I think the owners... Uh, let it get away from them a little bit. Uh, I, I think that, that the more you give somebody, the more they want and the more they expect. And if you try to take that back, it's like discipline in a football team or practice. If you have short practices and then when you lose a couple of games, uh, you, you try to lengthen the practice and lengthen the practice, you've got a problem. But if you start out tough, uh, and work them hard and then let up a little bit, you can get away with that. And this is the same approach that the, the owners uh, are, 
are up against is that they, they allowed this free agency to start, and now the players like it. They can see where everybody that's a free agent that's a good player uh, triples his salary or doubles his salary or sometimes even more than that in case of uh, Winfield. So they, they don't want to lose that. And we, th we thank you very much for the call. We have to go, George. We know that you have to go, too. We thank you very much for being with us this afternoon. George Allen on WHO Saturday Sports Line. Stick around next. We find out about the world in sports from the Associated Press.